Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. David Arquette is our guest tonight. That's right. Well, that, <laughs> Thank, without, you. Thank without, you. Without a, even a spontaneous entrance. Yeah. Uh, David no. usually He's invited tonight. sneaks yeah. up on us when we That's talk right. about him. His ears start burning on the uh, 10 freeway. He hops off or instructs his driver to hop off <laughs> yeah, right. and uh, drop him at the Love Line door. But uh, tonight... He is uh, in here, and uh, he's plugging a new movie. And uh, let me just take care of some quick business first. David Allen Greer is going to come in here and fill in for me tomorrow night. Oh, you pulled that off. I pulled it off. Wasn't easy. Wasn't easy. I had to play the birthday card. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, You know you're pathetic when you're talking. Your program director is going, I don't know. I don't know. We're doing. We're in a ratings book. I don't know if uh, David Allen Greer could fill in for you. And you're going, I'm 38. I'm going, uh... Um, it was my birthday yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> you know, big big 38. Lame. So I didn't get anything from you, so maybe this could be kind of something that you could give me. So I'm leaving for, I'm getting picked up at 5.15 tomorrow to go to New York. So good times. So uh, he'll be in here tomorrow night, and that's uh, much better than me anyway. David Arquette's got a movie called uh, Eight-Legged Freaks, which is coming out uh, July 19th. And then a whole bunch of movies that are coming out. In this order, Stealing Sinatra, Foreign Affair, and The Gray Zone? Uh, probably The Gray Zone first, actually. The and Gray Zone's coming out in what, October. But we're here to plug uh, Eight-Legged fr- Freaks, right? A- actually, that and my uh, episode of Son of the Beach that, uh-huh. that airs right after yours, Penetration oh, Island, yeah. which I actually saw. Uh-huh. And um, I, was, I was moved by your performance <laughs> in that. <laughs> Truly, I was... Uh, I was saddened at the... Yeah, well, don't give it away. I, I, yeah. yeah, I can't, but the it, depth it was The depth to sunken? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good. It's a whole hour long. Yeah, when, when does that uh, Son of the Beach... Well, yours airs yeah. June 18th, actually. Oh, I'm going to write that down. You're the first up. Uh, uh, one hour... I'm June 18th, and then and you're I'm on the, the 25th. 25th. That's right. Now is, now, is yours a half hour episode? Mine's a half hour episode. Now, I saw David do an episode of Son of the Beach where he played uh, Johnny Queefer. Yeah, it was a sort of a throwback to the Frankie and Annette sort of rat fink yeah, kind of gang. Yeah, it was like the wild one kind of thing. I'm sure there were characters named Queef. Back it was back. called Queefer Madness. I see. I see. So yeah, this it, one's Saturday Night Queefer. Are you, are you resurrecting the Queefer yeah, character? I'm still Johnny Queefer, but now it's sort of a Saturday Night I'll, I'll tell you, I, and I, I, my tongue is not in my cheek when I say this. It was a tour de force comedically <laughs> for, da- for David Arquette. It really was. I mean, he played this great character. It reminded me, it, and if anyone has seen those old Frankie and Annette beach blanket bingo type movies, there was that biker gang or that weird leather gang, and that one sort of squirrely guy was like, yeah, he was like, I don't yeah, know, was yeah. his name like Rat Fink or Rat, <laughs> Ratso? Oh, or, or man, Bongo. that was Lucas's character, Lucas was Haas. Great. He was, uh, I forgot, he was crazy, that was his name. Well, that, uh, <laughs> anyway, that's coming up on the 25th, you can see me on the uh, big one hour Penetration Island special that's where right. I host. And you saw that already. I did. I actually, I got connections with uh, Jim Stein, one of the producers. So wow. I just checked out. It was really funny. And uh, it's a, a good one. A, not a bad acting job by you. No, Nashville. fantastic. <laughs> Considering I was learning my lines as I was uh, out there. No cue cards, Drew. They want you to memorize everything. Yeah, and they ultimately, they caved. Uh, oh, of course. No, no. I didn't oh, I know you better How that. dare Come you? Come on. How dare you? All right, let's talk about Eight-Legged Freaks, by the way. Yeah, Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, Eight-Legged, sorry. That comes out July 19th. Mm. Well, tell me about it. Uh, it's it's sort of a throwback to sort of old 50s sci-fi kind of B-movies where a giant insect takes over a small town. We have a Oh, many giant insects. It was yeah. quite a question. On the, on the Comedy, do do? though, right? Yeah, comedy. Now, is, but it's also scary. I mean, it's got... People definitely jump and, you know, there's a lot of thrills and d- chills. D- does it... And spills, does it take place in the present <laughs> or in the 50s? It takes place in the present. But, oh, okay. Is it, does it use sort of 50s-style really. imagery or does it use real to computer stuff? Real current, computer yeah. stuff. It's by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich, the guys who did uh, Independence Day and 
Godzilla. Went so to they high have... school with Dean Devlin. You did? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to have him killed. He was a ceramics major, too? Why? Because he's no. never, like, No, because he's, like, the well, that, and he's uh, the only f- famous guy. Like, I'm not the king of my class because Dean Devlin. Was he the was, guy I think it was a year older than me or something. Did the car but, commercials and stuff? Also, did said he, did he had some of the guys. He was an actor was for a while, but he's a fantastic guy. If you met him no. and sort of... No, have I you met him? him? I, I remember him from high school. i got to put him down. Oh, wait, wait. wait maybe That's all I'm saying. I, I'm just saying that Corolla is the king of North Hollywood High. I'm thinking I'm Gad Abba Zam Zam. All right, Drew, would you shut up? He didn't do any car commercials. You said there was a guy that used to put, like, do these big, huge productions, like put a car up on a giant globe and be taking pictures of these huge, huge... All right, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you half a point. Half a point for making that connection. I had the chili peppers at my school, so, I mean, that's... Oh, really? Kind of thing to... uh, you, what, did you go to Hollywood? Fairfax. Oh, Fairfax, that's where they went. Aaliyah? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Uh, me and my boyfriend have been dating for about five years. We have a daughter that just turned three. And um, my sister, when she comes, we go and pick her up out of town. Um, she'll stay a couple nights, we'll drink, smoke a little weed. Um, but my boyfriend and her have sex together. Um, perfectly normal. Perfectly y- your boyfriend and your sister have sex? Yeah, I watch. And the father of your child. Good times. Yeah. Um, Where's the kid during all this? Oh, my gosh. She's sleeping. Oh, of course. Of course. Okay. She would have never. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, um, like, I watch him go- give her head, and me and her have given him head together. Yeah. Your um, sister. Right. Did you and you, your sister. Did, your, yeah, did somebody like, sexually? Me and my sister have never messed around. We don't touch each other or anything. Yeah, but hold on. Hold on. Let me say this. The penis, like, you know how water conducts electricity? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you're in a tub and someone throws a space heater in it, it doesn't matter if the space heater touches you. You get electrocuted. That's the way. Same thing with the penis. You throw if in the room. you're licking on one side of a penis and someone else is licking on the other side of a penis, that means you two are making out. There's conductivity between of the phallus. Yeah, but it's you know more I mean? than making out. It's a, <laughs> I know, but I mean, it's more than conductivity. You and, your, you, you, would be, you and your sister would be better off making out than I'll having a what? penis separate. That is, you. Forget that it. You throw, a, you throw a penis into the room. And you guys are making out. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the tub and someone throws a penis in the that's tub... That's it. That's it. You're making out. Oh, my God. See, th- and she's calling from Florida, and I contend this is average behavior. No, this is considered modest behavior by Floridian s- standards. Aaliyah? Yes. Were, were the two of you or either of you sexually abused growing up, or did you have no. bad boundaries with your parents? Something? No, my father was never even there, and actually... Um well, I guess you can kind of call it abuse, but yeah. me and my mom and my sister, I mean, we all smoked sure. weed together, sure and we oh. drank together, and my mom was like the neighborhood cool mom. Yeah, hell were you when that all started. Um, <laughs> the cool well, mom. Cool when you're 11, but exactly. uh, when, as soon as you hit 18, you realize she's just a uh, uh, loser it's hag, awesome. yeah. <laughs> About 12, cool. 13. 12, 13. And uh, would any of her loser friends come around and do weird stuff with you guys? Um, the only, it, it only happened one time, but I mean, my mom called the police, had him arrested, and he was actually like a police athletic league guy. And what happened? Um, I was sleeping on the couch, and I'm a very hard sleeper, and all I know is that I woke up, and uh, my pants and my underwear were down around my knees, and... I jumped up because I was like 14 or 15. I was really scared, and I went and told my mom, and he tried to act like he was sleeping, and he didn't want to get up off the couch, and I said, well, Mom, pull the blanket down because I knew he was naked, and she pulled the the blanket down, and he was naked, and she told me to lock the doors, and she called the cops. Hmm. Um, Lock the doors? Yeah. So so he he couldn't escape? Yeah, she didn't want him to try to leave. Of course, he couldn't unlock the doors, Um, I guess, yeah. Well, no, my mom's boyfriend was standing in one door, and my mom was in front of the other. She's a pretty big woman, so I don't think he could have gotten through her. Hold on. I'm getting quite an image of this mama. Oh, yeah. Part linebacker, part drug <laughs> dealer. All cool. <laughs> yeah, picturing this woman blocking the door with, like, a joint hanging out of her mouth, wearing a pair of those uh, stretch pants. What's going on here? <laughs> Damn it, Smitty! <laughs> I can't believe you did this to I my told, daughter. I told you the second time you finger my daughter, you're out. Now I'm calling the police. Aaliyah? Yeah. This is a disaster. <laughs> did you really need to have a kid? Oh, that's messed up. Please. You've got to be a horrible mother, possibly worse than your own. Are you kidding me? That's <laughs> <horrible>. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you're carrying on with your sister. You can't yeah, wait, have a, you have a bizarre relationship with your boyfriend who is the child's father. Uh, we don't mess around with other couples. We're not swingers. Uh, look, it, it, this, 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 is, this, that would be a great step up no, <laughs> if no, you no, fooled no. around with strangers. No. <laughs> uh, actually, my, <laughs> Hold on a second. I yeah. can't get over this. It's, yeah. like, it's not like we swing. It's not like we invite yeah. other couples. We in. just have sex with family members. I just blow them with my sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> What's that? Yeah. All right. Okay, baby. Um. We got some problems, Leah. You you don't perceive normal boundaries. <laughs> yeah, you need I boundaries. Have a question. Yeah. Um, it's it's mainly to Doctor Drew because I guess he deals with like the psychological or whatever. Well, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, is there anything wrong with me not having, not getting jealous, or not having a problem with? There, there's there's something wrong with you in that you're engaged in this entire situation. Really. And you don't seem to s perceive the emotional impact and the violation of normal boundaries. And and the necessary impact it would have on your child that you carry on this kind of relationship. Well, it's not like it's going to last forever. Um, yeah, but it doesn't matter how long it goes on. Your kid has a mom who thought this was a good idea yeah, one this, time. This is who you are now. No, not that it was a good idea. Um, I don't. If I heard it coming from somebody else, I'd be like, "Whoa!" Then why do you allow it, it to go on? It happened. Then why do you allow it to go on? It hasn't happened recently. Okay, baby. All right. Um, hey, listen, I'm going to guess your husband's profession. I'm guessing it has something to do with tar or asphalt. He's a mechanic. Oh, he works around metal. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the kiss of death, working around metal. What kind? Diesel mechanic? No, uh, car. Okay. Yeah. Okay, listen, do not get pregnant again. <laughs> I'm or, on the shot, so... Please, good, good. please, double down on that shot. Okay. It's, and and uh, you come from a crazy environment where there wasn't too many boundaries. It's time to stop that. What's a boundary? Well, no there kidding. you go. <laughs> where, right. I think she is asking. <laughs> yeah, where, where you... Where there are sort of perceptions of what the limits of self and reasonable right, behaviors are. I can't are. get over this. You, you and your sister perform fellatio on this guy... Not at the same time. I thought you said you did it at the same time. We switch. Like, we don't go both down there and go licking them everywhere. Like, she'll give them... <laughs> she'll give it to them, then you do, Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. It's not like right. we're down there kissing each other's tongues and... Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought that's different. I didn't know you guys were tagging out before the next one went in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't share a teacup with my sister. I'd have to, I'd have to throw it. Throw it in the fireplace. <laughs> Seriously, when we if she hands me a cup, I throw it in the fireplace. No, I don't doubt it. That's what I do. Holy Christ. I still contend this is average Florida behavior. We're, now, David, an interesting story growing up about boundaries and stuff. You were, you were raised in sort of a commune-type setting? Yeah. Originally? And, yeah. and it was some Maharishi's uh, concept you guys were following? Uh, yeah, there's this Indonesian guy. It was sort of uh, just a spiritual philosophy. What was his name? His name was Bapak. Uh huh. Where was it? <laughs> it was, uh, well, I was born in Virginia at, on this commune called Skymont. And, you were uh, born on the commune? Yeah. But what, you, what year was that? Cause it, 71. Well, that was, <laughs> you got screwed. 71 was just the height of the crap era. No one had a good idea in 71. Every, every car was bad. All the architecture oh, all that was bad. Stuff is great. No, oh, it's all horrible. Man. No, it's, it's all the mess. best. The music's pretty good, but I'm, all the ideas are horrible. I've been tainted because I love big collars and platforms. Just, look look just look at the architecture. <laughs> just think of the architecture. What I love the, the architecture. You no. kidding? What architecture? Oh, Flat man. roofs with white rocks no, on them and the, aluminum windows? No, it was the beginning of modernism as we know it. Nah. I mean, it was uh, just, you know, just. I'm Coming just saying, if you were born in '81, your parents wouldn't have had, you wouldn't have been on that commune. No, uh, probably not. No, because the guy actually he showed up one day. He, they said, "Please come from Indonesia and see what we've built here." And he comes and he's like, well, "This is not what this philosophy is about. <laughs> You're supposed to, you know, become closer to God and." and you know, work. Bring your spirituality out into the world. Yeah, if you're an actor, go where actors are, and if you're a, go work. Really? Yeah. And nobody wanted to work in that commune. Well, <laughs> they, I don't know what the hell they <laughs> so were doing. That, that that was a but isn't know, that Islamic movement? In, 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 in the, it was Islamic, Buddhist, and uh, and Hindu. <laughs> so you got the guy finally to come out to the United States to see what you were doing, and he didn't like it. 
No. He and did he break it up? Did it break up yeah, immediately? Yeah, it broke up. <laughs> did, did, he, did he, like, walk in and look around and go, what, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's so... That is, he said, what are you doing? And everyone moves. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, it, l- but yeah, the boundaries were really screwed, too. The kids were just running around wild. Yeah. You were just... You were no, just... Uh, and, like... Uh, I mean, the philosophy of the spirituality and the whole thing is is a good philosophy, but it also attracts a lot of people in crisis. So there's all these sort of wackos around, too. Yeah. I, I grew up in a free-range environment myself. A lot of uh, went to an alternative school. Me, too. Called the <laughs> teachers by the first names, Chuck Dirt Clods. Yeah, I did, too. <laughs> Just walk around. You, you really, it's like Lord of the Flies. You don't You don't learn anything. It's like it, here's Which one. Did you go to? Oh, I went to a bunch of them. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, it, it, it's crazy. You just the whole thing was in eighty one. You wouldn't have been going to any of those either. No, I wouldn't have. Yeah. No, this was seventy one. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. It was. It was. If a child wants to learn, he'll learn. If he doesn't want to learn, that's his prerogative. You can't foist oh. your words on him. You go up to him and ask him oh. what he feels like doing. And, of course, I said I, wa- I wanted. I felt like wrestling and throwing dirt clods. <laughs> I was seven. I didn't feel like sitting down and learning vowels and consonants oh and all that. God. And, you know, consequently, I never learned any of that uh-huh. stuff. And, and, and they always threatened uh, you to always threaten to throw you into public school. And I thought public school was like Auschwitz or something. They were like, well, the way you describe it, ultimately, <laughs> you did live that kind of life in public school, didn't you? Well, public school, I, I got to public school, it was like a lot of blacktop, chain link, and the whole essence of public school to me was hitting another kid with a ball. <laughs> That's basically what every game could be distilled down to. <laughs> Who could get hit with a utility ball? <laughs> that, see, that wouldn't have flown at the free range school because you don't, you know, violence, competitiveness. No, no, man. Hang out and uh, fire up the potter's wheel, see what you can do. <laughs> Good stuff. I guess it worked though. I just throw the clay, literally. Yeah. All right, Eric. Yeah, sort of like when you get older, you sort of find out, you know, how important boundaries are and how much you sort of need them <laughs> yes. and w- would like them. Growing yeah. up. <laughs> Erica, it's just the screwed up narcissistic adults that can't deal with them themselves that wouldn't dare want to voice that on a child. Well, part of it is 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 laziness too. I mean, it's a pain in the ass to get a kid to do something the kid doesn't want to do. It's yeah. much easier just to let of cut course. the kid loose and, and say, "Do what you want to do." By the way, when you don't want to grow up either. Right. Why do your kids grow up? Oh, but listen, we went, <laughs> we went on a field trip to the uh, burnt out SLA headquarters in Watts. Wow. You want to talk about progressive? I mean, I was uh, six, seven years old. I'm walking through the streets of Watts, looking at the burnt out house that the uh, feds shot some tear gas into, looking for Patty Hearst in uh, 1972 or 73. And the house caught on fire, and there's bullet shells everywhere. And we're walking around. Now, the teachers wanted to go check it out. See, that's the way it went. Four or five hippie teachers. Uh, having a bad, uh, having a bad trip. Maybe they smoked, got hold of some bad weed, or they loaded up on knives in that morning, and they wanted to head out and check it out. So they're like, "All right, kids, a cultural experience." Meanwhile, we're seven. We got to learn about the Symbionese Liberation Army and Patty Hearst and <laughs> expired forty-four shells out in Watts. Are you kidding me, <laughs> Erica? Yeah. You're twelve. Yep. You're twelve. Yep. Thank God you weren't going to school in 1972. <laughs> What's up? Um, well, I have really bad arachnophobia. Mm. And I was wondering how phobias start and how you can get rid of them. It's a good you know, question. I don't know much about that, to tell you the truth. Uh, I know there are a lot of theories out there about how to sort of desensitize people to these things and get them through this. I don't imagine seeing your film would help things any. Yeah. No, I, actually, I think you should confront that might de- your that fears. Might de- <laughs> that might desensitize her? No, no, that would sort of might shell Solidify shocker, things, yeah. that's right. Uh, mostly people in behavioral medicine deal with these sorts of things. Uh, unless they start to become more generalized, like you start getting anxious about going outside or you get paranoid about other things. Well, if you see a spider, what happens? Um, like, I scream a lot, and then sometimes I start to cry because... I don't know. Hmm. Are there, are there other situations, traumatic situations, that have made you feel helpless and out of control in your life? Um, just in general? Yeah, yeah. Any other major situations that have made you feel completely helpless? Um, not really. All right. Hmm. All right. 
Well, uh, do you see a lot of spiders where you live? Um, well, I go to Mexico about four times a year, and there's a lot of spiders. What do you go to Mexico yeah. for? Um, we have a house in Cabo, so oh. we go for vacation. Yeah. In Colorado and Cabo. That's that, got to be oh, a rough life. Oh, my God. Are you scared of daddy long legs? Yeah. Are you? Really, the little harmless ones? Yeah, I'm not a big spider fan either, but I, I realize they, they normally just try to stay out of your way, and they eat other bugs. You know what I mean? They're, yeah, yeah. They, they, they eat crampier bugs than them. That's right. But it, again, it's some like wiring that gets going in your brain, some vulnerable period right. that gets coupled with it. Well, maybe she needs experience. to be ex exposed to some. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know that we could say, hey, go... You know, do a fear factor type. Okay. I, I don't know how someone would desensitize. Where in Colorado things. do you live? In Boulder. Oh. Check out the, so the university. Your time between Cabo and Boulder. Oh, what a life! Yeah, Jesus University of Colorado has, has, I'm sure, would have resources for you. So, yeah, aren't all twelve year old girls scared of spiders? Yeah, though? it doesn't sound like anything that needs to be treated, though. All right, unless let's, she's interested uh, in. It. Let's take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we're going to speak to uh, Judy. She's a virgin, wants to know if it's a good idea to date a guy who isn't a virgin. She's 15 years old. David Arquette is our guest tonight, and we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. David Arquette is our guest tonight. Eight-Legged Freaks is the name of the movie. It's coming out July 19th. And um, also, i uh, got uh, a couple other movies coming out pretty soon, including uh, Stealing Sinatra, which is uh, the true story about uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. being kidnapped That's many uh, years wow. ago. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting. Wow, I didn't know about by, that. By guys who were sort of bumblers. Yeah, they're knuckleheads. And uh, it seems like a good idea. They've never done a movie on this? They haven't, no. A lot of people actually don't know it even happened. Probably. And there was a, a lot of weird stuff around it. Like, a lot of people thought Frank Sinatra Jr. was somehow involved, in which he uh, wasn't. How old was he at the time? He was 19. Was, yeah. this, uh, was this in the uh, late 60s? or 63. Early, early oh. 60s. Right after uh, <coughs> Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These guys kidnapped him. And it sort of got swamped by that. I mean, it got overshadowed by the assassination, wow. and, and they did it. There were Valley guys, though. They came yeah. from my neighborhood. They were sort of Vanus. middle class. They're sort of West Valley guys. Yeah. They went to uni high. Was yeah, there a West Valley then in the 60s? No, I think it was just a big uh, cornfield yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But <clears throat> they were in the valley, and they were kind of screw-ups. They didn't have a very good plan. That wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> they know. got caught in 58 hours. Yeah, it didn't, didn't take them too long to catch them. But, but Frank Sinatra Jr. didn't seem to have too big a beef with the guys. No, well, he, was he, did, he did with the... My character, this guy, Barry Keenan. Oh, he did with the one guy. The other guy yeah. liked a little more? Well, the other guy sort of... I mean, I'm not sure what really happened, you know, but um, the other guy is played by Bill Macy. He's sort of an older character, kind of right. takes him under his wing and makes sure he he's all right throughout it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. And he, But it seemed like Sinatra, with all the alleged underworld connections and everything... Couldn't pull this one off. It just seemed like a bad idea to yeah. screw with the guy. Well, he wanted to kidnap Tony Hope, Bob Hope's kid. Oh, really? But he didn't want to hurt the country because Bob Hope does so much for the country. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> so they have this real... <clears throat> I wanted to get uh, one of Dom DeLuise's kids. I figured, <laughs> that guy's a puss. I could handle him. He wouldn't have me killed. He's great. He'd give me some money. But they're such nice guys. I know, but you just take the one, whatever one's least likable, <laughs> and try to get like 1500 for him. Judy? Yep. So you're uh, you're 15. You're a virgin. Mm-hmm. You want to know if it's a good idea to date a guy who's not a virgin? Well, yeah, that, and then also, like, I'm like, I have standards for myself and whatnot, and I was wondering if it would do any good if, like, to tell him or if I would just be completely wasting my time. To tell you know? this guy that you're not going to have sex with him? Yeah. Are you already dating him? Yeah. How old is the guy? Seventeen. Seventeen. And I, I understand. It rather, I, I understand what you're asking. Well, really. she wants to know: should she be up front with the guy and tell him, "Look, you're yeah. not getting laid"? To to see if he really sticks around, or what? What would your? Well, logic? I want to know if I'm wasting my time. I want to know if he's in it for. Having I see. So you you want to see? You want to test the relationship? Exactly. 
Yeah, uh, th- th- this is a thought that women have that guys don't have. Yeah. I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. What? <clears throat> First off, what are you chicks doing that's so important, by the way, besides just hanging out? Well, they're, I they're, never see you doing anything. What, what time do you have? That's their biological clock ticking away at them. I know. You never but know. You're worried about, you know, we talk about this all the time. Women will go, break up with the guy. He's abusive. He's going to, he's, you, you're going off to college. He's staying back home. It's not where they go, I can't, then I would have wasted the last four years of my life. It's like, no, not wasted. You understand? Mm-hmm. It's like a bad job. You don't. You don't say I'm not going to quit because I would have wasted the last four years of my life. You can't get out of that job fast enough. Yeah, or, or you you look at whatever part of it you did enjoy or did whatever for you, and then you right onto something better. Judy, you, you're yeah. 15. Yeah. Don't don't think so hard about this. If you like the guy, if he's a good guy, if you're attracted but, to him, but you date him. Be careful. You don't let him boink you. That's yeah, all. and just don't get yourself in situations where he might try to overpower you, where you're alone, that kind of thing. Just for sure. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, but yeah, but I agree with Drew. Don't let him try any magic tricks on you, like where he duct tapes your mouth shut and your feet right. together and <laughs> blindfolds you and stuff. It puts you in a trunk with one hole in it. Yeah. All right. Okay. All uh, right. Thank you. All right there, uh, Judy. Hey, good times. And when are you going to lose your virginity? Uh, uh, I have no idea. All right. But you're not waiting till you get married? I'm going to try really hard. Good. Okay. Cool. What about oral sex? Um, I don't know. Okay, play that by uh, play it by mouth. Yeah. All right, <laughs> for now. All right. Yeah. Good, good times. Fifteen. Okay. All right. Thank good, you. good times. Okay. Take care of yourself. I give her to fifteen and a half. No, no, no. That Seven, she'll be fine. Seventeen, eighteen. She's got standards. Uh, that's what I hated. That that's the number She's one got boundaries. That's the number one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one thing I hated in a woman was standards in high school. Mm. Michelle or Michael? Because then they wouldn't date you. Uh, yes. Yeah, I couldn't date. No one wanted to date me, ever. Michael, uh, you're 18? Yes. What's up? Uh, well, I, it's like you guys keep getting calls from, like, uh, uh, teenagers that, like, uh, they've had, like, anal sex for the past seven years and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, I was just wondering. Like, like that last caller. Yeah, didn't the virgin we just talked to? She was out of control. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, because I'm trying to practice abstinence. And, you're like, gay. True, please. I'm sorry. Uh, and... It just seems like oh, it's kind of hard doing it when, like, a lot of other teenagers are just, like, letting it happen, I guess. And Right. Well, are they really? A lot of them? Well, I mean... Seven years of anal sex. You heard him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it just seems like uh, nobody really takes priorities. or Nobody? Really takes it oh, Drew, would you shut up? Stop busting the guy's No, chance. I mean, I wonder what the social norm is for his for other 18-year-olds or 17-year-olds. Well, here here's... Here's the way. I, I believe it's the same as it always was. In high school, or at least in my high school, there was like eight guys who were getting laid constantly. And then there, there was the other 1,200 of us who were just home crying, beating off every night. Do you know what I mean? There's the guys who got it and the guys that don't. It's like there's one quarterback on the varsity football team, and then there's the rest of the guys. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, yeah, that poses another problem because uh, I don't masturbate. No! Now, no. why why not? You just... You, well, I mean, uh, my dad kind of left me uh, at a, like when I was seven, and I kind of got back with him when I was like sixteen. Mm-hmm. So I kind of lost that, uh, I guess, role model. So I never really learned how to do it. So I just don't do it. Well, you think guy? Hold on a second, <laughs> Drew, David. You remember when your dad sat down, <laughs> a tub of Jergens, and a roll of paper towels, and taught you how to beat off? Yeah, that was. That yeah, was I was thirteen. Yeah. Wait I, a moment. Thank God I got a picture. <laughs> got stuff on the mantle. <laughs> He's passed away, but I tell you, I keep that picture in my wallet. Okay. Come here, son. <laughs> think how it is these days too. The video hand, mini handy cam, mini cams, handy cams. Son, I. Uh, Now, this is my Jack Bibb. (laughs) Your grandfather strewn it across his chest, and his grandfather brought it to World War I, put it across his chest, and now I'm passing it on to you. (laughs) Now, what you want to do is, well, back in the day, we used to use lard or goose fat. Hey, Smitty, come over here. (laughs) Show my son how to stroke it. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Now, not, not so fast, son. It's not a race. 
<laughs> that's right. That's right. Hold on, hold on. Move aside. Let Daddy slide in there. There you go. Just till you get the rhythm. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. You got that? <clears throat> All right. Carry on. All right, now you'll be doing that about eight times a week for the rest of your life. All right, let's, uh, oh. Michael? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> 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 I never even talked to my dad about, I never talked to my dad about anything from the age of 13 on. And if I heard him coming up the hall while I was beating off, I, I wrapped myself like a, in a cocoon with my <laughs> comfort and pretended I was dead. Not sleeping, dead. <laughs> I was just going to put fake blood on my forehead and knocked over the lamp. Because <laughs> they knew if I was sleeping, I still could have been beaten off. But if I was dead, he couldn't catch me. All right. Uh, this is no excuse. What's going on with you? Are you religious? Uh, yes. Well, all right. All right. Well, no were you, sex. Were you, were you taught not to masturbate? Uh, not that I know of. Hmm, no one mentioned this to you. All right. Are so you, are you, do you have sexual urges? Uh, yes. Do you have erections normally? Like when you wake up in the morning, that sort of thing? Uh, yes. Okay. Have you, do you have wet dreams? Uh, I try not to. I know, but you, you have no choice, right? Right. Yeah. If, if That's God giving you a handy, by the yeah, way. Yeah, if God meant it not to happen, it wouldn't be happening. The biology requires it. What about this? The God's whole problem with you beating off is you're wasting your seed, right? Yep. Well, then, why would God build in a mechanism where you waste your seed onto your mattress or comforter in the middle of the night without your hands? It doesn't seem like it's a good plan. Like, a God had, had, was, had a flawed plan in terms of the human anatomy. You know what I'm saying, Michael? Yep. Okay, but All right, good times. Good times. Uh, I don't know Michael, what his question Michael, was. Michael, get yourself a, a, a can of lighter fluid and a, a road flare. And then you sit down, <laughs> and you pour the lighter fluid all over your genitalia. You understand, no. Michael? Yeah. No, don't do that. Look, <laughs> if you don't want to have sex, don't have sex. And you don't, you don't want to beat off, don't beat off. We don't care. And do whatever you want. That's fine. And don't worry about what everyone else is doing. And and is it wrong that I, I think he should <laughs> let, light Look. himself on fire? No, 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 sir. No, no. <laughs> they masturbate. masturbate. Yeah. Well, here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me let me say a few yeah. choice words about Michael. <laughs> Michael is smart because Michael wasn't going to get laid anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can blame it on this. God damn! I wish I had something to blame it on through high school. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing worse than wanting to get laid, making it known that you want to get laid, and not getting laid. You don't come across that good. But Michael has a very convenient excuse. I could tell by Michael's voice he wasn't going to get a lick of trim anyway through high school. At least now he's got God on his side. But now's the problem, and this is the problem with religion. All right, Michael, you don't want to you don't want to get laid. You don't want to beat off. Fine, that's according with your accordance with your religion. But now you got to start looking for others and seeing what they're doing. And that's the problem. See, he wants to know what's going on with everyone else. Uh. This leave it alone. Hey, you don't want to get laid? You don't want to beat off? Fine. I'll see you up on the bell tower shooting at the kids in a few years. But leave everyone else alone. It's their business, right? Mm -hmm. And I would suggest a little beating off because you will go insane as an 18-year-old. I mean, Drew, I, how, how, how pent up are you going to be? That's, uh, how how, how well, fogged your, is your thinking going to be? It, it must, well, you must sort of hit some sort of ninja zone at some point. You must sort of fall into a, some sort of zone. I mean, it's like, like G. Gordon Liddy, Liddy you know, holding We're, his hand to a flame. Eventually, you're able to do it. Right. And your testosterone levels will drop, and the sperm fraction will drop a little bit. Not completely, but it will, it will fall off. Okay. So, All right. your body helps you a little bit that way. Okay. Let's take ourselves... And well, then again, every guy I know beats off twice a day. <laughs> Are they going to hell? Well, every guy, well, every guy you know. Is, all right, every not, guy not I know, true. But what about David Arquette? He's not going to hell, and he beats off constantly. <laughs> constantly. Non-stop. I'm you beating sure? off right now. Smitty. <laughs> Smitty. <laughs> now, uh, son of spit in the hand will suffice <laughs> in a camping trip or if the car breaks down and you're not in the presence of Lou. Now, you, what you want to do is lean back. Well, first, let's stretch the calves out because uh, you are liable to pull a muscle, especially if you flex your toes. Now, keep in mind, we did not have the aid of DVDs, satellite, or cable TV, much less the Internet. Nope. 
your father had to look at a picture on a raft box of a chick in a bikini floating in a kidney bean shaped oh, pool. Great grandpa Stu had to put a draw a picture on a piece of bark he with chalk. He used a burnt yeah. piece of stick from the fire to draw something that resembled a butt cheek <laughs> on a piece of birch bark, and that's all he had. He used to use the light of the moon. To illuminate. <laughs> Grab that National Geographic. Give <laughs> bring it over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, son. Look at those milkers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, I know she's a... Uh, uh, all right, we're going to take ourselves a little break. Uh, David, oh, so David Allen Greer is with us. About yeah, yeah, yeah. I just talked to the guy and confirmed his uh, him wow. coming on tomorrow night, so it was in my head. David Arquette coming in here and in here in person tonight. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break, and we'll be right back. Buddy, it's Loveline. David Arquette is our guest tonight. Yeah. Eight Legged Freaks is the name of the movie out July 19th, and uh, many, many other uh, movies to come. Nice uh, career you've carved out for yourself. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. It's good There's life, a neat right? movie coming out actually after uh, called The Gray Zone. And that's actually something that's really interesting. It's a, a film about the Holocaust. Wow. But it actually takes place inside the crematorium. It's uh, based on these people called Zonder Commandos, who are actually Jews who do uh, sort of the Nazis' dirty work in exchange for living a few more months or a few more weeks and uh, getting sort of alcohol and cigarettes and food. Right. And what, what were they doing? They're running the crematorium? Yeah, they sort of convince other Jews to take showers, which is like the gas chamber and and they dispose of their bodies and sort of go through all their clothes and shave their heads and burn Jesus. their bodies and remove the ashes. And See, I would have made it because I don't shower, as Drew knows. Right. Yeah. There's so. no potential of getting you in a shower. <laughs> <laughs> would have been, what, I've only been here for six months. Give me a break. It's still cold outside. So what do you play? You play one I of... I play one of the Zonder Commandos. <clears throat> oh, my God. Uh, That's an intense movie. Was it in one particular camp they did this, or all of them? In, in they, I'm sure they did it in all of them. It was in Auschwitz that this was happening, mm -hmm. and uh, and we shot it in Bulgaria, which is a pretty interesting place. Shouldn't we uh, still hate the Germans for this, by the way? <laughs> it's not like it's been 100 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been that long. we still be mad, right? A little bit. Okay. All right. We should at least not trust them, right? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Well, we, got, we bounce back pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Adrian? Yeah, hi. Hey, you're uh, 16? Yep. What's up? Huh? What What's going on? Well, I'm thinking about getting my clit pierced, and I just want to know if it's a good idea or not. I did it, and it got infected. Oh, well. And then you, you were just, your clitoris got desens desensitized, too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Had to, had to double down on the vibrator. Y yeah. And then you were just <laughs> all done. Completely done. That's right. And now I'm a nipple man. Oh, okay. So uh, you're 16. You want to get this done, huh? Yeah. What's up, baby? What yeah. happened to you? Nothing. Something. No. Oh, Who yeah. didn't pay attention to you? No, least? no. I guess there's a certain amount of little girl. has got the girl voice, voice yeah. too, yeah. Molestation? Hmm? Molestation? No. no. Come on. Nothing like that. Where's Daddy? He's home in the other room. Mm-hmm. Drunk, passed out. Sleeping. Mm-hmm. And uh, when did you lose your virginity? Where's my bourbon? Um, a couple months ago. Oh, that's it, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to play a new angle. Religious parents? No. Hmm. How, how's Mom? She's fine. Are, are, still are together? they jewelers? <laughs> no. No, Sorry, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to get a stun in there. Um, no physical abuse. No nobody, physical abuse? No. Nope. Nobody ever hit you? Nope. And uh, you hmm. just want to get the hood pierced? Yeah. Well, my friend did it, and she said it really helps sex. So. What if... Uh, oh, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> if the deal here is that you're concerned that you didn't have an orgasm during intercourse or that it wasn't that pleasurable and that a, that a cl clitoral piercing is going to somehow help that, you can forget about it. Do you understand that? Yeah, I mean, I had fun. My friend just said it made, like, yeah, she got it and she said it helped and it made it... I understand, like but if you're looking for help in that regard, this is not the way to go. Do you understand that? Yeah. Hmm. 
What's up? How, how are you doing at school? I'm good. I'm actually 4.0 student. All right. So realize that most women you raise do not have orgasm. All right. Okay. And those that do don't typically have it during intercourse. Okay. Piercing or not. <laughs> you, you have a boyfriend? Yeah. And the piercing might actually desensitize you ultimately and make it even more difficult. Oh, really? Ultimately. All right. I don't know. This, this we had bogus call. Okay. I think it's bogus. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Oh, gee, thanks. Yeah, I think you're making this one up. Not really. Mm, I don't know. It, it's not. It's not coming together. Oh. Four point oh. Parents still together. You, you know, up, it, you, it, it does come together for me because sometimes when, when put on hold for a second, I'm talk behind her back. All right. Sometimes when, they can hear us. when women are <laughs> super, when, when the parents are ultra super controlling and intrusive, I had parents who, who, uh, <coughs> who no, are interesting, intrusive parents, super controlling, except they're cool because we can talk about sex with our kids and we're going to talk about it and that's going to be okay. And the kids just go, hey, well, that's my way out. All right. Uh, your parents, uh, your parents controlling? Um, a little, not too bad though. Is there a doctor or an attorney in the family? Yeah, my dad's a lawyer and my mom's a lawyer. Oh, 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 that's abuse. That's <laughs> abuse. Okay, now now it's starting to Drew. Good good call. Starting to come together. Yeah, attorney. Sorry about the doctor thing, Drew. I'm an attorney. I get it. <laughs> yeah, t- two. It, the, the, those are horrible, horrible people. Attorneys. Uh, they I'd shouldn't. Have to agree. They, they shouldn't be able to raise hamsters. Those people. Well, they're a few horrible. seconds ago, you said your parents were great. Now you agree they're horrible people. Well, they're not horrible. They're just kind of. Yeah. Use big words and stuff. It's right. It's 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 time to do something that would piss them off. Well, except they probably talked to her about this. this no, is, no, they did not. No, this isn't liberal. No, no, it's not no. liberal. It's not liberal. <laughs> Do your parents <laughs> talk to you about sex? Um, it doesn't really come up. I mean, pierce or anything like that. Yeah, my belly button pierced. Did, did your parents open? find out about that? Yeah. Yeah, they're fine. They're cool. Are See? they? Are they? Would you shut up, Drew? Are they okay with that? Um. Well, my mom thinks it's cute. My dad kind of got pissed, but he's yeah. over it. I I think this is her sort of saying. You think you can control me? Well, let's see about that. It, it, it's a little. It's, it's a way that, to strike out it, against it, them. It's a that, bit. but there's such an underdeveloped self doing it that she's sort of even confused about doing it. Mm. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, it's like I'm, I, if something's wrong here. I better, I better put some metal down there and make it work because uh, well, this isn't going. I, I'm not. I'm not going down that route. I think it's her parents are perfect. They want her to be perfect. She's got to get the 4.0. She's got to go off to uh, Stanford or Berkeley or uh, UCLA. And now she's saying, "I'm going to assert myself and do something crazy." Yeah, but you got to wait till it gets. It's, it's a, a little abusive, though, right? It's just also the kids that get that physically abused or physically abused do the same kind of thinking, right? Yeah, it's the same but thing. But that's not going on here. It, but it's the same. It's the same. All right. kind of uh, All right, emotional. I'm abuse. done with you. I'm done with you, Drew. That's I think she should wait till it gets ugly to until she, you know, then pretty it up. <laughs> you know, wait till right. you're like 46. That's a good point. You know? Yeah, don't don't <laughs> don't paint the car on the way home from the dealer. Wait to get a few dings in it and some rust <laughs> on the quarter panel. Then you give it a nice paint job. Hey. All right, baby. Hey, good time. Hey, how about birth don't control? Don't do it. Birth yeah. control. What about the birth control? Um. <laughs> what are we doing here? Condoms. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she's like obsequious about it too. The uh, I'll tell you, uh, lawyer parents. It's horrible because here's the problem with uh, with lawyers they're not actual actually human beings for the most part about 99 percent of them aren't humans and they're sort of subhuman with huge egos and uh and educations and a, a lot of uh ten dollar words and uh, nice cars and oh what a disaster and they'll just argue everything into the ground oh two lawyers oh my god danielle yeah you're 22 yeah yeah what's up um, I was. I just had sex with my boyfriend, and I was electrocuted by my vibrator. Mm-hmm. That's how my sister passed, by the way. <laughs> you mean? You well, mean that it the really hurt? It really hurt. The battery operated. Yeah. No. Was that possible? No. Nah. What? Well, maybe. What, what happened? It just like all of a sudden, like my whole body started shaking, and it was. An all tensed up, and it wasn't like an orgasm. It was something from. Well, you had you had your boyfriend in you. You had no, the vibrator. Was, Where no, was your boyfriend? He he just came and. We shorted the thing out with a uh, rusty know. load. It you just sh- really hurt. 
You he, sure this wasn't a big orgasm? Have you ever had an orgasm? Oh, I have him like every time we have sex. He he just had an orgasm. And then he came out. He came out, and then like we put the vibrator in, and like after a while, it just I got this huge shock, and it like my whole body went completely numb and tensed up. And did the vibrator make a weird noise or a smoke plume come out come out of your vagina like or anything? Like hard thing came out. I don't know what it was. C, well, let's see battery, maybe. Hang on, hang on. Let's let's, let's pick this up after the break. Hard I, thing I, I gotta came out? I gotta hear more about this. Well, what does she mean a hard? I thing? don't know, but I'm dying to know. Okay, David Arquette is our guest tonight. It could We're be a new theme for his movie, an upcoming film. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think that uh, this is a shock, but I'm curious what the hard thing that came out of her was. Uh-huh. And how many does that kind of thing? I, I don't think there's enough to really no put idea. a zap in you. No it's way. not like a cattle prod or anything. But uh, <laughs> although I did, I have used one of those in a pinch. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. It's Dr. Drew. David Arquette is our guest tonight. Eight-Legged Freaks is the uh, name of the movie. Yeah, I got that right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's coming out uh, July 19th. Oh, I'm so excited that I'm um, being picked up at 5.15 tomorrow morning. Uh, is there anything worse? You guys both know what I'm talking about. That uh, horn honk at 5.15. Yeah. Still dark. A little disoriented. Not sure where you are. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. Is, you ever get used to it? No. Do you think you just get used to it as a human being? Oh, no. But as a human, <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't there be something where, all right, I slept a full eight the night before, so tonight I'll sleep three hours, and I'll do it, and I'll feel fine. Why do I got to feel miserable the entire day? Mm. You know, why, why sleep have to destroy you? Yeah. So, so why is it so important? Everything, heart's still beating. Yeah, why every day? Why can't you skip? Th- that's one what day? I'm saying. I can I, skip I, a meal. I can skip a whole day of eating. Why can't I skip a just day? one day? Yeah. Just one day. I cannot take a crap for a day. I cannot eat for a day. There's a lot of stuff I can not do for a day, and I'm fine. I feel fine. Why? Why the sleep? Why does it have to destroy you? There's a lot of people that don't sleep a lot. <laughs> people say that, but I, I, I can never believe. You know, they go. Uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin slept an hour a day. And I always think, no, it's a, they're lying. I know I hear about those people, but the, those people are, aren't they sort of a mess? Yeah. Well. Who functions normally? I'm just saying one day. I can't just do one day and just feel good. I'm with you. I wish that were so. No, the answer is no. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm with I like you. I like to redesign that. Yeah, when you're talking to God about that, also check out the business about the accumulating the sperm and releasing it at night. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah. to the bottom of that yeah. thing, too. Yeah, the wet dream, <laughs> yeah. why he would build that in. I mean, yeah. that's Since the, he didn't like those kinds that's of That's not only is that spilling the seed, but it's spilling it right onto the mattress pad. Yeah. And that's a disaster. Directly. Directly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Danielle? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, so, so you, you think you got electrocuted by your vibrator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it possible you weren't having orgasms before and now you finally just had one? I don't think so. I think I've always been having orgasms. What, what were they like before? They weren't as, like, shocking. Like, my whole body, like, I blacked out and, like, I don't know. It just felt really scary. <laughs> well, either you never had an orgasm till this moment, which is possible. Uh, the other possibility is that you had, like, a seizure. Really? Mm-hmm. Did you? Did, were you witnessed? I mean, your boyfriend saw you shake or anything, or do you? Um, I just said, "Stop, stop! I can't do this anymore. It hurts." Yeah. Did she just sound like a very screwed up person the way she said that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're okay. Do you have any mental problems, Danielle? Um. Why? You sound like maybe you got something going on. I've been through a lot. Oh. What? Yeah. Like what? Um. Rape and things like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's something. When she said, the way she said, stop, stop, yeah. it hurts, it, yeah. it sounded uh, to me like traumatic. very traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah, um, how about a little therapy for all that stuff? Yeah, I've been going. All okay. Right. What and size batteries does this thing take? Um, I guess normal, double A, I don't know. So may- maybe you had a... Chicks don't know. The chicks yeah. Don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, <laughs> I say all the time, you know, women, they complain that they get 70 cents on the dollar. They're so lucky they're not getting 50 cents on the dollar. 
I really mean it. There's a, they don't. They never know anything. There's never well, an answer. Although none of the guys we talked to and, have an answer. And, for and maybe either. maybe you had some sort of flashback of some traumatic experience. That's another thing that can happen. Who, to who them. raped you? Was this happened more than once? Um. Yeah. Who did I was this? Going with a guy for eighteen months, and he used to rape me like every day. Every day. Yeah, but where did this start? When I was fifteen. No. For eighteen months, every day. No. Well, after six months, yeah. It was what happened when you were eight? I don't know. Something must have happened. Anything. Nothing happened before this guy? Um, I was abused by a lot of guys in my school. Nah. Sexually abused? Yeah. Starting at what age? Um, 12. 12. You were sexually abused by a lot of guys at school starting at age 12? Mm-hmm. What happened when you were 8? I don't remember. I don't remember anything before I was 10. Okay. Uh-huh. Do, is there suspicion that something happened? A lot of people think so. I don't remember anything at all. What do they think happened? People, they just think, they ask me if I'm adopted, if this or that, and I just don't know. Okay. All right. right. Well, Daniel, I I don't think, first off. You were not electrocuted, first off. Then what was it? Maybe a flashback. Maybe. (laughs) It could have been anything, but it wasn't that. Maybe an orgasm. Maybe a seizure. I I don't know, but it it warrants evaluation. All right. Stick with your therapy, baby. Okay. All right. Oh, and an and uh, get like a double insulated uh, vibrator from now on, all right? Okay. All right? All right. It didn't uh, surprise because uh, I remember uh, just shortly after my dad sat me down and gave me the whole beat off <laughs> explanation, yeah. my mom sat my sister down and explained her how to use a vibrator. Without getting electrocuted. Vibrator slash dildo. Without getting electrocuted. Without being electrocuted. Yeah. Well, if something like this could happen if she hadn't, you know. Got right. all the details. Yeah. Well, during the break, I actually hooked my nuts up to my car battery, and I, oh, I kind of enjoyed it. Wow. I wonder what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It was a my it was mom. Right. My mom always told my sister, uh, <laughs> if you use a plug-in variety, use one with a, a GFI outlet, like the ones they have in the bathroom, the ground force interrupt ones, oh, so I you see. won't. You won't short yourself. Hey, maybe out that maybe way. that girl should should like move on to maybe like some kind of water tool. The electricity uh, might not be right. her thing. Shower I think head. she needs to move on to some serious <laughs> therapy because yeah, there's yeah, a bunch of stuff floating around in her mm-hmm. head. Jennifer? Yes. You're 18? Hi, Adam. Hey, Drew. Hey, David. Hey. Hey, hey Jennifer. Hey, hey. Okay, I have a question. Um, I am taking orthotricycline. This is my first month on it. I just switched over from orthocycline. All right. And two days ago, I lost my monthly, you know, pack. And... I was wondering, because I haven't, you know, taken it for two days, and I am very sexually active, and I don't want to miss any days. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. You were on orthotricycline. You were on orth- orthocycline. Yes, I was. And you switched the tricycline when? This month. I didn't when? finish it yet. When did you switch? Um, last month. This I started it for this month. How many days ago? Um, oh, I don't know. Again, with the math, you see, 70 cents on the dollar, not bad. I, I two days right. ago, five days ago, 20 days ago? Probably like 20 days ago. And then you lost it two days ago? Yes. And you haven't taken the pill for two days? Yes. You should consider yourself not covered. Okay. Well, I mean, is it safe for me to use, I mean... You can double for two days, uh, uh, but you will not be covered until the next pack. Okay. It's so not not no safe could, to have unprotected sex at this point. There's no way I could use, like, another pack until... No I matter can... what you do, you're not covered. Really? No matter what. But, yes, you can start another pack, and you'll screw your period up pretty good. I, I would call the doctor who prescribed it in the first place. Mm-hmm. But even if you double down for two days, you will be you should have another means of contraception to back you up. All right. Let's talk to uh, Jason, who's 29. Jason? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Good. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess I'm calling because this is somewhat of a celebratory day for myself. Um, I just turned in the last of the pages for the comic book of Eight-Legged Freaks. Did you? Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, they're coming out with a comic book? Yeah. Sort of like uh, a book version. Comic cool. Book yeah, thing. it's like a, you know, three times the normal size of a comic book. Now, I know, Adam, you have a little beef with the uh, comic guys of some sort, you know, that do do that kind of work for a living. But no, I don't mind the guys who do the work. Uh-huh. I. I, I know where they're coming from. Yeah, it, it's what? I mind the guys who buy them. Oh, <laughs> I don't trust those guys. I don't believe people should be reading for pleasure. I've said it many times. Well, especially believe, comic books. Right? It poisons the mind. Well, unfortunately, some people looked at comic books as a reference, which is really, really kind of tough to actually... Reference for what? Uh, reference to draw other comic books. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh I see. Uh, that makes sense. Well, that, and that's what you do, right? Well, I don't do the drawing. I'm well. If you ever seen Chasing Amy, the infamous tracer scene. Yeah, I, I never did see Chasing well, Amy, actually. It, okay. Well, there's a scene in there that kind of makes a point of uh, my aspect of comics, which is the inking part of it, huh. which is going over the actual pencils, er- ergo tracing. So, so you really? don't draw them, you just ink them? I ink them, yeah. yeah. And, Still you know, you takes had... some ability, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I do drawing for you know other freelance projects on my own, but... He does sound a little bit like the guy in The Simpsons that owns the cartoon <laughs> shop, the uh, no. comic yeah. shop. Hey, Jason's got it. I, I know where he's coming comic from. Comic book guy, yeah. yeah. It's All right, case. so... Did you want to say something to David? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, okay, David, I heard I heard this through um, someone who uh, actually worked on the project as well. Did you actually title the project, the Eight-Legged Freaks? Yeah, I did, actually. It, it, was, like, <laughs> it was called Iraq Attack, and in this sort of climate, it sounded too much like... Oh, wow, Iraq. yeah. Yeah, I can... That's a good point. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> so I got a... Uh, I was... In one scene, I was on top of a... Uh, like a... Uh, radio sort of uh, whatever the heck it is on blank transmitter town yeah or something? exactly okay and um and I said oh let me ad lib a line here because it was on my back and <laughs> I'm shooting the you know shotgun and it's a pivotal moment so I so I ad lib get back you eight legged freaks and then <laughs> Dean Devlin at, and then Dean Devlin at some point when they came up with a problem with the title sort of threw it out there and I guess they went for it he wasn't sure about it though. But uh-huh. it tested well, so yeah. <laughs> and it sort of goes with the theme of the film a little better. Too. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it would have to, you know, wait and see how people reacted to it before it kind of well, took. What but. kind of spiders did they use? Well, they're all digital, but they're really all, all good. of them. But they might, they didn't use some. Oh, they're all like crazy spiders. Most of them. I mean, at the beginning, there's this guy who has this sort of, uh, you know, little spider zoo kind of thing, and. Um, and you know, there's a toxic spill. And then <laughs> sure. He starts feeding them. Ways. You know, yeah, he starts feeding them big, you know, grasshoppers, and they start, you know, growing, and then they bite him and escape, and they keep growing at an enormous rate. I, I'm amazed at all the places that don't want us to do these uh, nuclear dumping zones in their hey, state. You, you know, you become superhuman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can <laughs> grow giant corn. Yeah, everything just gets bigger and better. Yeah. I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> so uh, I tell you, I like these kind of movies. I saw a uh, spider movie, like original. Well, not the original, but well, I saw. I loved the movie Them when I was yeah, a kid. That's the same. Remember that of movie feeling. Them? Giant, giant ants. Giant ants. Uh. Giant ants are scary when they're big. Yeah, yeah. All insects when they get big, yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah. Horribly scary. Yeah. They're perfect. You don't have to modify them too much. You just make them big. And and so these things... Now, is it a certain breed of spider There's that different gets kinds. There's uh, the orb weaver that sort of wraps uh, people up in the web mm-hmm. and cocoons them alive. Right. And then there's nice. the jumping spider that just sort of like, you know, they jump. And when they're right. big, they can jump you know, <laughs> far. Now, how uh, big do these spiders get? They get big. They get like the size of... Uh, well, the tarantula gets like the size of a... Uh, you know, van or something. Oh, good. And then, um, you know, the jumping spiders are like the size of uh, this desk. I mean, I don't know what, what you know. Right. Well, jumping spiders are real. Motorcycle life. or something. The Empire State Building. Boom. Right. You seen those things jump? No, yeah. yeah. No problem. Hey, Nate? Yeah. Nate is uh, calling to uh, correct me because I didn't say ground fault interrupt. I said ground force interrupt. Well, I right? was just going to check with you. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, it is fault. Okay. You're right. But, uh, GFI whatever. switch. You know, put them in the kitchens, put them uh, in the bathrooms. Anyway. There's, there's a uh, code that uh, any plugs within like four feet of a water source, like a sink, have to be there. Maybe it's six feet. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. You're an electrician, Nate? Uh, no, I'm not. All right. Good times. Let me, uh, let me ask you another electrical question. All right. EMT. EMT? Yes. The, the conduit, the rigid conduit known as EMT. What does EMT stand Boy. for? Um. Electromagnetic tubing. Sorry, uh, Nate. Uh, Nate, wait. I got a question, Nate. Who cares? Uh, Nate, uh, have you ever heard of a woman getting shocked by a double-A battery? <laughs> no. no. I never. Could you show me how to masturbate? How no. about Romex? <laughs> Just explain Romex. Romex? Yeah. Um, look, I didn't... Um, 
You didn't call yeah, for this. No, you uh, didn't, did you, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask for this. I was just All right, No, you're me. right. You're right, Nate. I, uh, point Sorry, well man. taken. Anyway, you guys crack me up. So. Thanks for calling, buddy. Thanks for All right. All right, bye. All right. You guys know what Romex is? No. You know, in the uh, old days, it'd just be a bunch of conduit, and then you'd pull all your wires through the conduit. Okay. Well, someone figured out at some point, why do that two-step thing where you run a bunch of conduit throughout the house and then yank a bunch of wires through it? It's kind of a lengthy process. Why not just make the wires, make the three wires, put a bunch of insulation on it, and we'll just roll it out and staple them where we want it. See what I'm saying? Makes sense. Romax. Romax. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, talk to... Anthony, who's 20. Anthony? Hey, how's it going, Adam? Good times, buddy. First, oh, great. Yeah, first off, let me uh, let me tell you that I can literally spend this entire show blowing sunshine up your ass. Thank uh, but, you. Uh, but, literally. Uh, since I can't, I just want to leave it to you. You're my hero. Thank you. Literally. Do- Dr. Drew, yeah. you, are, you are awesome. Com- compassionate beyond all belief. It's truly an admirable quality. Thanks, Anthony. He's a good man. And, yeah, and, and David, hilarious. Thanks, You bro. are oh, awesome. Loved you and ready to rumble. Hey, Great thanks. movies. Um, my, my question was, want a little bit of advice. I, uh, I'm a driver for an escort agency, uh-huh. and uh, I told my girlfriend this on Sunday. She thought I was uh, working as a stalker for, for fries, <laughs> and she flipped on me. Really? I mean, yo, yeah, she got pissed. Well, yeah. I mean, she thinks I'm, like, doing all these chicks down here and, like, you know. Well, you, you, don't, little, you, no, I, you don't live in the same town with your girlfriend? Oh, we do, we do. And driver for escort. What does that mean? What's that mean? Well, yeah. Well, pretty much like... Uh, like the bouncer think, for the for the stripper kind of thing? Um, yeah, and more. Well, I mean, you're Are you a bimp? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm more of a, a bodyguard of sorts. I Ooh. take the girls to the call, um, collect the agency fee, and then pretty much hang out and make sure, like, usually outside the room, um, and just make sure everything that stays cool, and then take the girl back to the office. And, and when you say outside of the room? Um, hotel rooms, usually we go to a lot of hotels. Um, houses on occasion, apartments here and there. What's to prevent you from getting arrested for all this? What's to prevent me from getting arrested for all this? Well, at least not really doing anything. Yeah, I'm not really doing... I mean, if they, if the police wanted to, they could ticket me for being for working in the adult business without an adult license, because I don't have an adult license. But it's like a $50 ticket that you go down and pay. I mean, and that's pretty much the so most... So, somehow, a participating or accomplice in prostitution is not a... Well, I, it's probably hard to prove... I mean, yeah. you, you're driving the girl over there. You say, look, I don't know what's going on inside there. I thought it was a bachelor party. She was going to do some dancing or something. I didn't Pretty know they were much, having yeah. intercourse. Yeah, you, you could do it. You, meanwhile, yeah. he just sits out in the Chevette and beats off. Counts why, his is money. It, why is it surprising to you that your girlfriend would freak out well, about this? Well, you know, and it, it's not so, like well, surprising to me she, that she would freak out. I understand where she's coming from. Um, you know, I mean, especially I lied to her for three months, and, and I understand that. I shouldn't have, but I I don't know. I mean, I just I didn't know what I should do. How much you know, money? I, how much money do you make doing this? I make a couple hundred a night. Oh really? Yeah. The is, girls tip you out. Yeah, ten percent. Is this why you do it? Because of the money? Pretty much, yeah. Ten ten percent, and uh, you get you get the cash, a couple hundred a night. Yeah. It's not a bad night, and we do credit card too, so I get a check also every couple of weeks. And uh, basically, uh, just hanging out. Pretty much. Killing time. Yeah. How long's the average session? Um, man, pretty much. It depends on the money, really, but you're looking at half hour, 45 minutes on average. Uh huh. And uh, now, what if there's a problem? I mean, what if the chick's not out in an hour and a half? Uh, if she's not out on time? Yeah. Uh, well, if there's a problem, then I go knock on the door. Um, if he doesn't let her out, then we're supposed to break the door down and go in and get her. Wow. And is there any uh, penalization, like, uh, let's say he uh, he busts one in her eye or something like that? Do you have to go in and get an extra 20 bucks? Um, well, you know, yeah, sure, why not, well. if you can. <laughs> All right. Uh. What's, the, uh, what's, what, what's the nationality of most of these guys? Nationality of most of them? Yeah. I think most of them are white. White guys? Middle-aged looking, white men, businessmen. Look, looking for love, huh? Yeah, pretty much. What do the chicks look like? Um, actually, they're they're pretty good looking. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, they're 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 pretty hot. I mean, they were all girls that if I saw in a bar, I'd be hitting on. And uh, average age? Um, twenty three, twenty four. 
Nice. Eh, not a bad gig. What do you guys, I, I imagine the conversation to be stimulating on the way to the gig. Usually, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we have a good she, time. She's chewing gum. You're listening to the, uh, BTO on 8-track. And How uh, did you get this job? How did I, um, actually, my, uh, my buddy came home one day with the newspaper, and there was an ad in the newspaper for it, and then uh, a couple weeks later, I just kind of got out the phone book and started calling him. Yeah. Hey, uh, you, you have no problem. There's no, no they, conscience. I, kind of doesn't bother you. Let me, nothing. All right, let me explain something to you, Drew, because yeah. I, I was thinking about this. All right, because um, this bewilders you, me. Well, your your life always had a a path, right. even though you were not you had not arrived at your destination yet. Right, you you could look way down the train tracks and and see the see the town. Okay. Um, but as a guy who sort of floated around, kicked around myself, looking for a gig, first off, the whole money thing becomes a complete priority. Yeah. I mean, if someone amount. says you can make a couple hundred bucks cash for a few for half an evening's work, as opposed to the seven bucks an hour I'm currently making with taxes being taken out for digging ditches, you'll do the two hundred buck a night thing, hands down, no problem. I mean, it's the difference between sort of surviving and a little bit of thriving, right? And you, you don't get so much involved. You don't want to hurt anybody, but the moral aspect of it is out the window. Wouldn't bother you? No, you wouldn't. Well, it wouldn't bother. It wouldn't bother me. Would you suppress it? You just would just ignore it. I I I would have said, I'm having trouble paying the bills. I got, I got to survive. I, I got to do, this. and I'm not hurting anybody. These chicks are doing this. They get paid. These Johns want to pay pay for the service, and I'm merely. Like the Romex carrying the electricity. What if it was delivering bank robbers? No, I, I think everyone has that line. I mm -hmm. mean, maybe it's gay porn, maybe it's uh, child pornography, maybe it's hurting somebody else. But I think as, a, as an atheist who was low on cash at age 20, could have, would have looked at this as a dream gig mm. and uh, done it no problem. Wow. Yeah. Sold weed, whatever. I would have done. I would have done whatever. Most guys do, especially their choice is nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they don't have anything to fall back on. Mm. I don't know if he's in college or what his uh, deal is. I think he's going to have to swing this with his girlfriend, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he she has to freak. Oof. Does she have to? Uh, well, I know you're going to freak. I mean, come on. Your wife would freak. But never, I mean, are you kidding? But there are chicks who could do this. <sighs> I would worry about them. What, uh, who would go along with this yeah. guy? This guy it's works for a service, sort of, he sits out in a car. It's sort of abusive to women, and it's sort of, you know, exploitative, and these women are prostitutes, he's hanging out with them, it's like, you really, that's your boyfriend. a little, he ain't doing them, though, he's just getting uh, a gig, not, and he's sitting in the car. Uh, who knows? Yeah. You don't think he may be getting them? Mm. What, do you think she's giving him something before she I don't know. gets with the John? I don't know, probably not. All right, calm down, this guy's fine. All right, David Arquette, who uh, has to leave because... Uh, Courtney Cox is waiting at home, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a good reason. That's a good reason to leave. Easy. Oh, his house is probably so big he just can't find her. There's no <laughs> room she's in. Eventually checks uh, 120, 130 rooms, gets tired and goes to bed <laughs> in the in the grand ballroom. Jesus, what a life. Eight-Legged Freaks, which is uh, coming out uh, July 19th. Go out and see it. And then uh, when these other movies come out, David, yeah. uh, come back and give them a plug. I sure will. We'd love to have you. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. David Arquette has left the building. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. David Allen Greer coming in here tonight, substituting for me. Then me and Jimmy on Thursday night from New York. And Drew, I was thinking about that last... <laughs> Mm. He told you to uh, be prepared to bring it, by the way. Bring it? David did. Okay. I spoke to him uh, on the cell phone on the way in. He said you didn't bring it last time. Needed you to bring it. All right. So tomorrow night, you bring it. All right. And, and get him to talk to you about, uh, he's going to Africa on safari on Friday. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, man. Wow! Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh him to talk about that uh, on there i was thinking about that last call and just the uh on the uh this making money and how all that stuff works and how uh really about 90 percent of the country males 20 year old males are in this guy's shoes yeah they do anything for a buck hmm. 
Oh, listen, I, 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 would have, I, I was always looking for a gig like this. I, I was never lucky enough. It was my dream job to get a job like bartending at a strip club or just being a, just something that involves some tips and some, some hours. Gosh, yeah. something, something where the alarm clock didn't go off at 6 a.m. and taxes weren't being taken out and there were a couple of chicks around and you got a little cash. You didn't have some guy busting your chops, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Although I'd probably still be doing it. Yeah. Easily. David? Yeah. You're 21? Mm-hmm. What's up? I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. You were talking last night about how um, a girl was thinking about going into the Air Force and how that would have some effects on her on her child. She was talking about leaving the child, as I recall, for a long period of time. Okay. And that has a profound effect on the de- development of a child. The The attachment process and the biological what's called synchronicity between the child and the primary caretaker is how your brain develops, the emotional brain, the self-brain. And if that is interrupted or ruptured, it has profound effects on the emotional development. So you would not suggest uh, a mother leaving her child for, say, six weeks? Well, six weeks, no, six weeks doesn't necessarily have a dramatic effect, not necessarily. I can't, I, it's hard to say what six weeks would have, but she was talking, as I recall, was going to ship off for two years or something. It was just like, oh, okay. she didn't give a time period. She just she said she didn't. wanted to join up. No, but it gave us a sense that she, she was just going to be gone. That was it. And I was like, well, jeez. Yeah, I don't think she said that. She, she, she wanted to join the Air Force, I believe, and uh, or the Navy. And she didn't have any idea when she was coming around or going to be around. Why, what's going on with you, David? Well, my wife is going to be, or at least attempting, to join the Air Force, and she's concerned about the long-term effects on our child. What's she going to do for the Air Force? We don't know yet. Uh, Something just kind of to get by. Uh, I think she was considering uh, mental health. What for for the Air Force? Mm -hmm. What are you? uh, What are you gonna? What are you doing? Well, I'm going to be hopefully doing some schooling while she's doing. Well, tell her to look into John Bowlby and uh, Alan Shore and attachment theorists and. uh, there's Interesting that it. she wants to yeah, emphasize mental health, mental health yeah. and she said turning her kid into a vegetable. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can just join up with the Air Force and not be shipped out somewhere, and don't you have to do some basic training and that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's that, about six weeks. That's the six weeks. And where does she do that training? In Lachlan Air Force Base in Texas. I see. And how does the military work out? All the people in uh, Lachlan, Texas have to go off to D.C. and all the people. How do they know where you are and where you where you can't be. Everyone has to ship out somewhere. Everyone has to go somewhere. Right. You're in Louisiana, you got to go to San Diego, and all the people in San Diego, oh, you're going to Louisiana. That's right. All right. Uh, I don't know. I suppose she could go for six weeks, and you could uh, look after the kid. Yeah. But then what? I mean, you're... and and what and how much money does that pay? Would you better off just uh, getting a gig where you guys are? Well, I don't know. I thought about that too, but at the same time. There's a certain uh, comfort with the Air Force. You know, you got your rent paid for, the yeah. everything's the security. Right. And that's a big factor right now. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm with you. I was going to join the Coast Guard Reserve when I was 20. Because hmm. uh, the uh, notion of uh, having a little medical, a little dental, and a right. little, little something coming in, that wasn't, didn't sound too bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, plus, they'd pay for college. Junior oh, well, I, college. Yeah, I was going to say, I know that was very important to you. Yeah, eight bucks a unit over at Valley College. Diane? Yes? You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um, I have this guy that I'm seeing. I'm not really seeing him, but I've known him for like four years, and we've had this sexual sexual relationship with each other, and that's just purely it. We've never called each other boyfriend and girlfriend. And How long has it been going on for? Um, About four years. We've, Since you were 13? I was 14, sorry. And how old was he, 19? He was 21. 21 when it started. So, yeah, and so I was 14. He's, so he's a criminal. <laughs> no, he's not a criminal. I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I, I understand you don't see anything wrong with it, but yeah. he, he was a criminal. 14 and 21? Yeah, he, I was I was 14, turning 15. Turning, turning. Actually, I was 15, sorry. This is, this is a pretty long time ago. I was 15, he was turning 21. I'm now 17. We kind of got in a fight because he uh, left me to go with my friend. He's not your boyfriend, Diane. No, he's not my boyfriend. So what... what but I, he was like my first love. We never... Well, he's not your boyfriend. I know, but I fell in love with him. Okay, well, he's an asshole. Yeah, I know. Okay, and he's a criminal. He's a cr- and you should go... You should stop defending this guy. Okay. He's an asshole and a criminal, and he abused you. 
True. What's worse, asshole or criminal? Abused me when I'm willing to have sex with him? Yes. This is why these things are in place, because of the consequence it has on 14, 15, 16-year-olds. <laughs> because of how you think about that relationship, when in fact all he sees you as is someone to serve his sexual needs. He sees you as a giant vagina. Yeah, that's it. Same thing I see when I look at Drew. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. He... Well, anyways... Drew, I think he's stymied her. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, it's, it's time is you begin addressing reality. Okay. It's time. It's time to come onto the planet Earth here and deal with what you're. Look at what you're dealing with here. So now the guy's twenty four. He's, 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 he's a despicable asshole. Hmm. Twenty three. Twenty three. And uh, you're uh, now he's seeing one of your friends. Yeah, he's seeing. He's he he's totally done with that relationship. That's already broken up our relationship. That we had. You didn't have a relationship. Yes, we did have a relationship. He wasn't seeing anyone. I wasn't seeing anyone. We were having sex together, but we really didn't call each other boyfriend or girlfriend. Yeah, because he, he just, didn't want to be. He, he didn't want to be boyfriend. He just was having sex. Yeah, that's so, it. So that's was the, I, though. The, no, you said you were no, in love listen, with him. You, you were just holding still. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was rocking his world. You know. Yeah, All but right. you were in love with him, and he had none of those feelings for you. Yeah, he did. Then why didn't he call you his girlfriend? Huh? Because he was, like, afraid that, you know, this getting out, me being 14, 15, right. him, him being 21, that's not good, you know? His friends would see him as a criminal, as you guys say. All right, yeah? all right. Hold on. I wish there was uh, more of you when I was uh, 21, 22. <laughs> uh. but, but now, we, we didn't talk to each other for about a full year, mm-hmm. and we've been now talking to each other, and it's been probably about four or five months, and I've been seeing him again. Mm-hmm. But now... Someone at his work that he's met, she's also 17 and a virgin, and he's like dating her, calling her his girlfriend, but he's f- me on the side. Ooh, what the f word! <laughs> All right, hang on, Diane. Diane sounds like such a delight. Oh my god! I'll tell you, if um, if I saw Diane's dad, I would not only kick him in the nuts, but I would do a rare rocket assisted kick in the nuts. Ooh, this, nice. is, this is where I take a couple bottle rockets and I actually duct tape them to my uh, steel shanked boot that nice. I use. Very good. And I light them off. Um, you ever see uh, they'll do that once in a while. Big uh, big airplane with a big bomb load. World War II. They have actual rocket assist mm-hmm. takeoff. That's, uh, that's what I do. I fire off the bottle rockets and uh, put the put the steel toe uh, right into the nutsack. Oh, oh, uh, up from his ass to the nutsack. Uh, I could go backside. Okay, I go backside. Good. I prefer to do it frontside because I, I like to watch his eyes roll back to the back of his because head. Because someone has screwed with Diane in a major way. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, sexual abuse per se. No, no, I, no, I just no. think just well, this twenty-one-year-old took care of that. Horrible, horrible parenting going on, Diane. What are you talking about? Mr. Hey, shut up. Hey. hey, listen to me, <laughs> stoner. Hey, shut up. <laughs> I mean, you smoke a ton of weed. I smoke weed every day. Yeah, shocking. wonder how I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't don't use the F word or the S word on the air. Please, okay. please, okay. I, I beg of you. Now listen, Anderson, calm down over there. I'm not done abusing. Anderson's pissed because we put you back on the air. Oh, look, this guy's a criminal. I don't know what your dad did to you, but he did a horrible, horrible job. My parents are really cool. They've met him before. They yeah, know what age they're he They're horrible people. That, that even speaks more of how they, they allow their daughter to be abused by this asshole. I'm not being abused. I'm yes. going he, over there. Diane. Yes. You're going over there. Now he's dating another 17-year-old, right? And, yeah. you, and you're keeping it going with him. Well, yeah, I just have to decide, but... Yeah. We, or what's up with you? Fantasy answer. I want to get laid. No. Yeah. You, you listen, <laughs> who are you kidding, stoner? What are you, you talking about? You, you're the one who, who smokes a lid every week, not us. Oh. Are you high? You think you got us convinced? No. You're in love with this guy. You're always into this guy, but he's I an was. abuser. You're into him now. He's an abuser. And he you can't accept it. He has no feelings for you. Whatever feelings he claims he has is manipulation to keep you in there so he can keep having sex. And that is it. All right. So That's why don't reality. You, why don't you just address reality for a heartbeat here, baby? Could All right. You, could you do that? Just find a guy who wants a relationship, who's not, uh, who's not your senior, 
It's just a guy. All right, and quit smoking so much weed. Hey. Hey. Hey, hypocrite. Hey, I, I barely smoke weed. Oh, yeah. And listen, I'm a genius. <laughs> hey, if I got that paid, I'd have the nicest weed. Yeah, but you'll never get paid because you smoke weed all day. <laughs> Oh my god! All right, listen, All right. Uh, listen. I wish someone would play a tape of this back to you one day, so you yeah. can see what you sound like. S- stop it, baby. Diane, mm-hmm. listen to me. Your plan for your life bad doesn't work. No, you're sleeping with uh, guys that are five years older than you, that are criminals, that are abusing you and using you, and you're smoking weed all day long. <laughs> all right, baby. Hey, have a good life. Don't get pregnant. I'm not. I'm worried about society now, and I'm done with you. Train in the background. <laughs> Train going through the living room. Oh, geez, what's worse than that female Hesher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if I've talked to you for a minute and a half and I know you, and I know you smoke a ton of weed, do you think one of your friends told me this doesn't bother you? Yeah, that we can tell just by talking to you. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, you're 18. Ooh. What's happening? Yes, I am. Uh... I've been with my girlfriend for uh, about a year and a half now, mm-hmm. and uh, the first year was great. Uh, our sexual relationship was great. I mean, we fooled around a lot. Uh, we had sex a few times, and uh, the past few months, there's just been, like, absolutely nothing. And uh, I'm just confused as to what's going on. I'm not sure if it's me, uh, if there's something going on with her, or... Uh, well, what's up with you? Are you into it? Oh, yeah. But she's not. Uh, well, she was, but... No. Michael, like, why are we talking to people? Uh, it's like we should come up with just fantasy answers tonight. Why, why bother talking about reality? Oh, well, she was into sex with you. Well, then she will be till the end of time. Yeah, you're into it. She's not. But she was. I know. She, I can't even establish that she's not into it now. You you were both into it. You're, yeah. You're still into it. I am, yes. Now she's not. Uh, well, we kind of don't see each other that often. And uh, when we do, um, I mean, she's, I work a lot, she works a lot, and uh, usually she's really tired uh, when, when I'm with Michael? Her. Uh, yeah. You were both into it? Yeah. You're still into it? Yeah. Now she's not? Yeah, but... Okay, I mean, stop, stop. <laughs> Just the, the yes. She lives about 30 miles away. Whoa. All right, Michael, please. Wait, listen, here's the whole thing. Mike to to, to 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 Michael and all the Michaels out and, there. And they, what was the last one name? Don't listen. Don't defend yourself because if you defend yourself, then it's not like you're asking a question. Do you see what I'm saying? Why ask the question? Here's what I'm saying. All right. Here's what I'm saying. Why say? Listen, I'm calling. There's this guy I'm I'm really into. We've been having sex. He's now having sex with someone at work. And then when we say, well, you're, this guy's a criminal. No, he's not. Well, you're, uh, you're into the guy. You obviously have feet. No, I know. No, I, it, then you've nullified the question. Yeah. He's a great guy. You're not into him. Where's the question? What's the problem? Why are you calling the show? Michael's uh, had a great sexual relationship with this girl. He's still into her. She's into him, but she's a little bit tired. No problem. No problem. Why'd you call? Why'd you call? That's that's saying it. It it adds too much. She's not into you like she was. No, but I mean, we both love each other, and we want to we have, like have a future with each other. Yeah. Right. Stop. Stop with all the justification. Just let's stay with the facts. Don't, stay with the reality. Didn't she have a question when you called though? Yeah. What was it? Uh, I asked. I was wondering why. I mean, like, if there's, if there's something that goes on that do girls just get tired of? Of doing that, or do they just? Yes, they when when there's something when they are either not into the relationship, uh, sort of uh, not getting their emotional needs met in the relationship, or need to sabotage the relationship. Well, actually, m- most often it's me not getting my emotional needs met. But why? Because she's not having uh, sex with you. Oh <laughs> uh, no! It's, no, it's not just that. It's. I mean, like, stuff has just died down. I mean, I don't feel like it's coming from my end. All right. Not- well, she may be checking out She's here. not into this. Yeah. Or, or, or looking for a way out. This could be, could be close to an end. She have a, she, did she have a tough childhood? Oh, no. No, her, her parents are great. Everything's good? Yeah. She's uh, working right now? 
Uh, yeah. She hasn't been complaining about you not spending enough time with her or anything like that? Oh, no, not at all. Then there's something going yeah. on. Right How on often here. do you see her? I see her, uh, oh, well, she just got back from out of town, but I see her pretty much every day. Every day? Yeah, but I don't see her that, I mean, I see her every day, maybe like a, like, ten minutes one day, half hour another day, or something like that. Why? And when you, do you count looking at a picture of her seeing her, too? <laughs> You're looking at her through the window? <laughs> why, why, do you, why such short periods? Not uh, ten minutes. So she she's in college. I'm still in high school, and I work, and she works, and our schedules are just weird. They don't. So you just see just, see, just ten see. minutes. She's just yeah. kind of busy. Like too you busy, see her too like busy. during nutrition and. Wonder, wonder how she would describe this situation. You want to find out? When's the last time you guys had sex? Oh, uh, probably six, seven months. Six, seven months ago. Yeah. I'd right, hold on, Michael. <laughs> I know we talked to him long enough, but that was a fantasy answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got we to gotta take ourselves a break. We'll just be back to try to... I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, snap Michael's emotional jock oh. strap and see if we can pull him back to reality. To reality just it, a little it's going to require more than a snap. Okay, then a full-blown wedge. Yeah, yeah. After this. Hey, y'all. Love line. I mean, that's true. David Allen Greer coming in here tomorrow night. David Arquette. Out of the studio, eight legged freaks. Hey, uh, I, what's the difference in spelling between legged and legged? Same. Same? Yeah. Not one G versus two G's or anything like no, that? I don't think so. How would you know the difference if you were just looking at the word? It's like tomato and tomato, really. Oh, all right. Because I said uh, eight legged freaks. And he all right, so me. you're going you're gonna, to uh, pull the jock <laughs> <down laughs> <with laughs> poor Michael. Michael? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. You're uh, dating a girl a year and a half. Yep. And uh, you're in love. You're going to get married. Haven't had sex in seven months. Maybe never had sex. Did Did you have sex with her before? Yes. Intercourse? Yes. You uh, Your penis was lodged in her vagina? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's been seven, eight months since you've had sex? Thereabouts, yeah. You, so you, would... you see her about sometimes ten minutes a day? Yeah, sometimes. I don't think she's your girlfriend. Uh, yes, yeah, she is. She is? Yes. How do you know? Uh, because we've been going out for over a year. When, uh, when do you go out? On the weekends? Uh, whenever we have time. And what kind of stuff do you do? Uh, we go, uh, out with her friends. We go off my friends, uh, go to movies, go to, I take her out to dinner, go out with her parents. With her parents and your friends? And uh, why don't you ask her what's going on then if you hadn't had sex in half your relationship now? Uh, well, I did uh, at a point a couple of months ago. She said, well, I just kind of want to slow things down a little bit, but <laughs> we're already we're sort of steady. And, do, do, uh, you, do you make out with her? Oh, yeah. You kiss? Yes. But no sex? No, n- nothing. Like, no, no intimate things at all other than, other than kissing. No tongues? Oh yeah, tongues. But tongues. Like, all right. No, no, no oral, no anything like that. When's the last time you gave her a tongue kiss? Uh, today. Oh, today. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Confusing. I don't know. You better ask her because if she's when a chick says I want to slow things down a little bit, bad sign. And going out with the groups of friends yeah. and and not something's up. Yeah. I mean, it's not like she shut down three weeks ago, five weeks ago, eight months. Eight months ago. Oof. So that's a very long time. I, I, I would question. I know if I talked to her, she wouldn't say Michael was her boyfriend. And if she would, there'd be a there'd be a Qualifier, disclaimer. Yeah. Yes. Jason. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Hi. Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I just like to say, Adam, you're the best. It's a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. Bogus. Yeah. At- Oh, yes. Yeah, this uh, is why, guys. Adam, you're awesome. Thanks, hey, guys, buddy. This is why I didn't take this tell call. Tell the juggies I said hi. Yeah, I tell the juggies you said hey, hi. You know what I'm saying? I can tell Bogus just reading it on the screen, guys. Just oh, reading it on the screen. Oh, you tards over there, you phone screening tards. Drew, I, Drew reads the screen and, and knows the things, Bogus. Unacceptable. Fantasizes about his 16-year-old sister. Wants to know if it's normal. And by the way, the wants to know if it's normal part. Yeah. Anytime they say, "Is it normal or is it bad?" Not a question. I sodomized my grandmother. Healthy? Normal? 
Or, or worse yet, help. Help. <laughs> that, I sodomized my grandmother. Yeah. To be fair, it was an open casket, so she was asking for it. <laughs> and the bottom of the casket, not the full uh, four-quarter teak that they use, no. but cheap uh, quarter-inch luan <laughs> right in the bottom. <laughs> but Peter said no difficulty making it through that luan. All right. I mean, I have pretty good instincts in these things. People should not question Drew is a... Uh, you know, let me tell you the thing that's scary about Drew. I as soon as I heard Jason's fourteen year old voice, I said, "This is bogus." Yeah. He just sounded, and he you know wanted to give uh, big ups to the juggies. Yeah. So of course, obviously bogus. The good news is he was on hold for ninety seven and a half <laughs> <laughs> minutes, over an hour and a half on hold. But I can't tell if someone's bogus until I actually talk to them. And even then, it's difficult at times. Drew reads the screen and knows when someone is bogus. It's gotten to that point. Producer Ann and, and Brian, the phone screener, said, uh, Hey, uh, why haven't you taken line one? The guy's been on hold for an hour and a half, and it looks like a good call. Fantasizes about a 16-year-old girl, boy, uh, six year old sister. Wants to know if it's normal. And Drew just said, uh, It's bogus. Man, you got a very, very yeah. good eye for that. Yep. For a guy who doesn't know anything, about anything. never knows anything yeah. that's going on. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have like almost no human I've instincts. Got, I've got the laser beam in these l little tiny areas. That's where all your mental all energy goes. must yep. be focused. Yep. <laughs> all right. We'll be back. All right. Well, that's it. I want to thank uh, David Arquette for coming in here tonight. You're here. And uh, I want you guys to all uh, look forward to uh, David Allen Gray. <laughs> Can't wait. Twinkie hole. You, you got to bring it too, Drew. And bring you it. Bring it. Down right now. Bring, bring it. And what was the other thing? Bring it. That's all I know. Bring, give me the pen. Hey, Twinkie oh, hole, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, you're not going to bring this in. No, no, and, this right here. This will be here in the morning. Yeah, you need. Oh, okay, you need to bring it and uh, bring up his African safari. All right. Road to hell and burn. <laughs> all right. Safari. All right. So enjoy him, and I'll be back with uh, the Jimmy. great Jimmy Kimmel on uh, Thursday night. Okay. Until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Doctor Drew saying. Mahalo. He's an asshole and a criminal, and he abused you. True. What's worse, asshole or criminal? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.